people sometimes have the misperception that documentary is about information, that your job as a documentary filmmaker is to relay information. It isn't. Your job is to tell a story. Um, if, if within that there is some vital information to be relayed, uh, then not only does that make your film more relevant, um, but it also perhaps elicits some change. That's all important, but at the, at the end of the day, no one's going to watch your film if you're just informing. You know, you have to tell a story. When I came out of film school um, and started working in the film industry, I had intended to do narrative film. Um, someday, perhaps, I'll get back to narrative film. Um, but uh, first of all, all forms of filmmaking are difficult, and documentary is not easy. But there are lower thresholds. There are lower, the, the barriers are lower with documentary because at the end of the day, you can, all you need with a documentary is a subject and, a, and your camera and some initiative. Um, where with narrative filmmaking, you have to convince a whole slew of people, a crew, you generally have more money involved, you have to convince actors. Documentary filmmaking is easier in that sense. Um, and furthermore, you know, there's, there's stories that present themselves in real life that you couldn't, if you wrote it, you wouldn't believe it. You know, there's, there's, there's incredible stories that are existing right outside that door that um, I'm not a clever enough uh, creative person to write that story, but if I can go find that person and have him or her tell me their story, then uh, I, can, I can have as an impactful a film as any in the world. When I talk to young filmmakers, the first thing I say is don't wait for yeses, because inevitably you will not, you'll get a, a slew of no's, you won't get yeses. If, you're, if, you're, if you set up these barriers um, that, that you feel like you have to overcome before you start shooting, I need to raise X amount of money, I need to convince these certain people, I need this certain camera, then it, those barriers will always impede you from starting your film. You have to go out and start the film. You may not have the money that you want, you may not have the, the equipment that you want, um, but you're, you're going to get, if, it, if it's a great story and you, are, and, and you learn how to tell stories in the right way, um, then you're, you're going to, your film is going to be powerful. And you're going to make mistakes, of course. I, I still make mistakes on every film now. I'm constantly learning. But if I was waiting to, uh, for these invisible thresholds where I'm not going to make those mistakes or these things are going to be ameliorated by, by a certain amount of money or people involved, then my projects to this day wouldn't get started. You have to go out and start your film. And I, it never ceases to amaze me the amount of, I, I wrote a lot of letters when I was a young filmmaker to, uh, dear sir, you're so great, would, I would love to work for you, may I do so? And um, it took me a long time to realize you can't write your way, you can't write letters to get into the film industry. If you want to be a filmmaker, you have to go out and make films. If you want to be a craftsperson in the industry, you have to learn that craft and work your way up for, for free or nothing. And, uh, and you have to, and you just have to be you just have to be a hustler. This industry takes only the most hustling of individuals. Otherwise, you know, go sell insurance. This, this, is, now, this, this is now a filmmaking tool. My, I could make a film on my phone. Now, I'd rather not, and I don't exactly recommend that to young filmmakers. I think you should, you should get the tools that you can and hopefully get some, some folks around you who know what they're doing if you can. Um, but at the end of the day, if shooting it on your iPhone, because that's the equipment you have and that, those are the resources at hand, then do it. And even if that film doesn't win an Oscar, it's gonna start you on your way to, to making films. The size of crew I have is usually dictated by um, how much money I have, uh, how far away I'm traveling from home, and also the intimacy required with that, with, the, with whatever I'm shooting. Um, I love to shoot with two and three person crews. I think that's a good size for, for a documentary if, if the two people you're working with really are consummate professionals and, and great storytellers as well and, and, and agree with the way you're telling the story. That that's to me is an ideal size for a documentary crew. But often I'll shoot on my own. I've, uh, you know, my first film was shot almost entirely by myself. Um, and you have to also, as a, as a documentary filmmaker with no money, you usually have to become a shooter, whether you like it or not. I, I kind of did uh, just out of necessity. But lately I've been shooting, you know, I've, I've had a lot more ability lately to, 
to use, um, you know, five and ten person crews. And it's a great luxury, but I don't necessarily think that it's more powerful than what you can get with two or three people or just yourself. Obviously, film schools play a more important role these days, but I think that filmmaking is still an industry. It's one of the few industries in the world still where there's, there's really, there really is apprenticeships, you know, where that you, you start with very little knowledge and you're, you're, you're schlepping from the bottom, but you're learning from the masters because that's ultimately how we all learn to make films is through experience. Um, and there are some of those masters here in Colorado that I've been really fortunate to work with and to learn from. I've, uh, I've recently, you know, had the pleasure to work with a lot of the professionals here in Colorado that I worked for as a terrible PA and was, was the worst at bringing them coffee. But um, some of these people, you know, like George Tegg, uh, someone who I had, uh, have always admired and, and uh, worked for, and now I get to have a guy like, guy like that on occasion working uh, with me on creating these stories. And, and that's, that's been a real joy because there are some incredible professionals here in Colorado, um, those, especially those who have been around since the, the salad days of 20 years ago. I think I, in, 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 that, in that sense, it is, there is a trickling down of knowledge. Now, at the same time, I think there's a trickle up. There's, there's got to be a trickling up of people like, like, like Jamin, who are making their own films by any means necessary. Here in the state, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're doing, and we have uh, Emerging Filmmaker Night here at The Bug, and all of those folks are doing whatever they can to make their own films. Now, they, they start making films long enough here, and the size of their projects grow, hopefully I'm a good representation of that, that you, you end up being at that level with the, the masters here in Colorado, that you're, you've, you've built it from practical experience. I've been a member of CFBA for decades now. Not always in good standing, I am now, thankfully. Um, so uh, I've, I've always appreciated CFBA. Um, and the fact that it, it helps connect our film community. Um, what I don't think CFBA should be is, is um, I think, uh, is a place where people just talk about the incentive and talk about the idea of, of kind of this, this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And if only we have that, then we would have this industry here in Colorado. Because of course we have an industry here in Colorado. And when I look around the country, I see communities where there's been a great industry built, but it was built on the back of independent film, a community like Austin, Texas. You know, of course, Texas has had incentives, but um, that, that state, and Austin in particular, was built on the back of independent film, on filmmakers of the community who said, let's band together and let's help each other out and let's make films here. And then the, the, the community kind of grew upon that, and of course the, the, the incentives is a huge piece of that. So I think what, CFB, what CFVA can ideally be is a place where we can get together, we can help each other out, and we can help make films at whatever level and not wait for, necessarily wait for the big productions to come in and when will I get my job, but let's help each other out and let's build the community from the ground up. I've, uh, I've been part of Emerging Filmmakers Night here, um, yeah, from the very start. And uh, I actually met my wife here and, and I have shown a lot of films here over the years, and, and what I like to think is that we're all emerging filmmakers. We're constantly emerging. So it's these, um, it's these uh, staples of Colorado film, like CFVA, like Emerging Filmmakers Night, that I'm trying to continue to support even now that I've arrived, even though you never arrive, uh, especially in documentary. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to do what I can to continue to be part of these institutions, and hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully the next one, the next guy or gal along the line is going to be a better filmmaker than me.